One of the things you have to do is to train the mind, train your mind to, again, perceive this as something that you can deal with. Maybe in the beginning of the day, you can't wrap your, your mind around what it's going to take to complete that whole event. Nobody can. However, you can wrap your mind around what the next five minutes is going to take, and then the five minutes after that, and, the, and then the hour after that, and then the mile after that. The other thing, certainly, that we have to train is uh, the physiology of the athlete so that physiologically their body is perceiving that day as low stress. How do you do both of these things? How do you train an athlete so that their mind, their internal emotions are perceiving this day as something they can tackle? And also, how do you train their physiology so that inside their body's going, eh, this is hard, but it's not the hardest thing I've ever done. You have to provide them with training that overstresses both of these elements. Uh, and one way to think about this is that uh, when, you, when you design your training program for your athletes, you want to have short periods or short tests or short challenges that are more difficult than anything they will have to deal with in the race. So let's say your athlete is going to be doing Ironman France. The bike course is very hilly. You call the race director and you find out what's the you know, what kind of gearing are athletes needing the average athlete to get up those climbs? 32.19, whatever it is. So then you have your athlete go out and do climbs where they need a 32.21 or 32.24 so that they get used to stuff that's steeper. You have them train in, in weather conditions that hopefully are uh, as challenging, if not more challenging, than what they will meet in the race. So if your athlete's going to Kona, it's a hot place. Has anybody ever been to Kona? Was it hot there? And windy. So what do you do? You have your athletes do bike rides where they're training into headwinds. You have them do some of their runs where it's at the hottest point of the day that they can find so that their body gets used to dealing with those conditions. And as they do it over and over and over, they realize, wait a minute, I can handle the heat. I can handle the wind. You design lengths of training that hopefully will extend them beyond what they will need to uh, uh, deal with in the race. And I'll talk about specific distances in a bit. But a great day is kind of, it ends up being the sum of your physical training and your mental training or your emotional training, your mindset. So if this is where you need to be to have the race that, you're, that you are going toward, the sum of the mental and the physical training has to be above that bar somewhere, okay? Physical training alone won't get you ready. Visualizing day and night won't get you ready. But if you do all these things together, then you have your athlete prepared to handle that race. If their training is below that level that will take them to the finish line, it's going to be a very tough day. So that is also going to be your job as a coach to figure out what is that bar? What does this athlete need to be able to do to accomplish the dreams and goals that they are after? Now, the world does not follow our our uh, ideal game plan. So as an example for me, back in 1989, I'd, I'd done Ironman six, time, uh, six times. I had zero victories. The guy I was trying to beat, Dave Scott, had six. And I was trying to, I figured Dave on his best day could go about eight hours and ten minutes. So I was getting ready to go eight hours and nine minutes. Okay, well, the Ironman is not the ideal day. So even though I thought my bar should be here, I was, ready, my, I was ready for that 809. Well, the Ironman didn't cooperate, and it threw a lot of challenges my way that I didn't count on. And so finally I realized, if I prepare for my ideal day, that's not ever going to happen. So I need to prepare for something way high, much higher. I need that fudge factor. And so in 1989, I was actually felt like I was physically and emotionally, mentally ready to go seven hours and 45 minutes. I ended up winning that year for the first time. You know what my finish time was? Eight hours and nine minutes. Huh. Okay, so maybe your athlete thinks, this is where I need to be to be ready for my race. You as a coach have to go, okay, that's on your ideal day. Where is the real, the real day going to take you? Get them ready for up here. Physical and emotional preparedness. <clears throat> 